Welcome back, everyone, to Pod of Thrones. I'm Jeff. I'm Jennifer. How about that new theme song? I love it. I, I I just barely registered after watching the first couple episodes that Trent Reznor was one of the guys doing the music for this show. And I didn't even ask. Jay Sarge is like, hey, I uh, tripped. <laughs> and then when I fell down, I barfed out a new theme song for you. And here it is. <laughs> I was like, how do you do that, man? And he he said he just wanted to make something that sounded kind of resonary. It's very cool. And it worked. So, Jay Sarge, ladies and gentlemen. Again. The master of podcast theme songs. The genius. He can do any genre. And if you want him to do the theme for your podcast or anything else. Look him up uh, on Twitter at the J Sarge, T H E J S A R G E. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's awesome. He is. Mm-hmm. We love him. We do. So thank you, J Sarge. That's a lot of fun, as always. Uh, <clears throat> so back to Watchmen, which we did in fact go watch almost immediately after recording the last <laughs> episode, and then it's just been a question of finding time to record another podcast. We watched Watchmen. <clears throat> we want to watch Watchmen. And we're going to go watch more right after this recording of a podcast. So we're mm-hmm. just going to keep chambering these things and hopefully we'll just pump out the content for you. Stay on the Watchmen train. Uh huh. I mean, it's not like it's going to take us that long. It's eight or 10 episodes, mm-hmm. one of the two. Uh, so, episode two of The Watchmen Martial Feats of Comanche Horsemanship. Hmm. Right away, quite a title. Nothing quite so obvious, or what I thought would have been obvious, is the last episode with its lyrical reference to Oklahoma, but there is a painting that we see during this episode, and that painting is called Comanche Feats of Horsemanship. It was painted in uh, 1834 by George Catlin. And, Hmm. I mean, there it is. I mean, it's exactly what you see at the show. It It must mean something. And I'm not exactly sure what, except that Perhaps, like, what you see the guy doing in the painting is, like, hanging half off the horse. Like, he's about to do something really cool in this fighting style. And... But uh, wasn't it all Native Americans or the same? The same? Weren't they all the same people? There was no, like, other... (laughs) Uh, I'm looking at the painting right now, and there's three Comanche, and then there's one white horse, and I can't but tell from this fuzzy picture on my phone. But there are it, no like might Caucasian. A, I think it might be a Caucasian dude that that they're riding towards. Oh, okay, well, I, I think when like, I was looking at the picture, I did not see any other. I can't see that from here, but <laughs> um, what I was thinking was that perhaps it's a like. A, since they were all the same, if if indeed they were, it's like the person in disguise against mm. their own people. Mm. But I don't know. Interesting. If there's a white guy there, then well, you can't it's really the white tell. Guy. <laughs> he, he's either he's either also hanging off his own white horse, or it's a guy that just got like murdered and he's like falling off the horse because you can barely see him. I don't know. Uh, maybe you're right. Maybe that's a little headdress on his head. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Not a lot of explanation about what this painting's really about, except that the Comanches had this cool technique where they could dodge an enemy by dropping to the side of the horse while still riding it and not falling off, and then they could get back up and start killing people again. Pretty cool. That's all I got. Wish I could do that. Uh, Maybe with enough practice. Mm-hmm. It's time to get you a horse. Some good boots. Christmas is coming up. I can't get a pony. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I think you would need a full-grown horse. We don't have enough time for a pony to grow up. Just get you a horse. Um, it can live in on our patio. Well, I think a pony is a, a type of horse, isn't it? I thought it was just a baby horse. I don't think so, but I could be wrong. I don't know. Maybe it's a teenager horse. <laughs> well, then it's just going to have a bad attitude, and you don't want that. <laughs> no. Not for your first horseback riding lessons. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's talk about the episode. Uh, the episode starts with a flashback of sorts, except we're in Germany. And I I don't know if any of this is going to matter later, but we meet a young lady named Mueller. 
she speaks fluent English and the commandant of this, I guess, Nazi place where the uh, Nazi secretarial pool. Mm-hmm. I don't know. They're like transcribing probably messages or something. Something. And the commandant has a job for her. He dictates a letter and uh, what we see, it's all about like, why are you fighting Basically, like, why are you fighting for America? Right. And they wind up dropping these propaganda leaflets over platoons of black soldiers. And unfortunately, it's not a bad point. I mean, it's like they've experimented on you. You've been slaves. Why? You know, they they oppress you at every turn. Why are you fighting for America? I wonder if that's factual. Well, that's a good question. Hmm. I don't know if I have time to look that up right now, but it wouldn't surprise me. I, I think there were some propaganda uh, parts of the war in that regard. Hmm. Um, that does ring a bell out of some history books, like dropping leaflets onto soldiers. So that very well might be a real thing, uh, or very close to it. Did it work? Probably not. I mean, obviously the Nazis lost, but it, it's not a bad idea if you can sow some doubt into people's heads. Sure. You can definitely turn the tide of a battle or two. Uh, so that also that goes leaflet. Oh, yes. Well, I mean, that's also <clears throat> interesting that within this episode, mm-hmm. um, from what we find out later, mm-hmm. or what we've already found out, I can't remember <laughs> what we found out in this episode, but it's also interesting that that um, they're talking about going against your own people again. Oh, well, you're finding a common theme here, aren't you? Maybe. Maybe. Hmm. I had not thought of that. Um, so this le- we see one guy specifically reading the leaflet, and it all turns around and around and around. <clears throat> it turns out to be the dad who went back to Tulsa and had the little boy who was locked in a trunk on his way out of the Tulsa Race Massacre, everything we saw in episode one. Uh, so. So he had that po- he had that pamphlet with him for. Who knows how long, but he brought it home. Right. He brought it home from the war. It was on him at the time of right. the Tulsa race massacre. <laughs> so did he like ju- just come home? Oh, wait. Tulsa race massacre was in 1942. So he might have just come home. That's a shitty homecoming. <laughs> <laughs> Fight the war for your country. See, that's what the propaganda is all about. You're fighting for your country. And what are you going to get for? You get home and you fucking get massacred. Mm. Ah, uh, god damn it. Ugh, now I'm angry. Marka. So this this leaflet about why are you fighting for your country winds up in the pocket of the boy, except it just says, like, take care of this boy. Very, like, Paddington Bear uh, phrasing. Um, remember Paddington Bear? He Paddington just came, he Bear just came was with a such a pud <laughs> that I never watched him. Not quite as action-packed as Watchmen, I'll admit. <laughs> And he never hung anyone from a tree, uh, to the best of my knowledge. <laughs> but anyway, so that that's where this leaflet winds up, is in the pocket of the boy that becomes the old man that apparently single-handedly hung Judd, whatever his last name is. Crawford. Crawford, thank you. Good. Uh, from a tree in mm-hmm. modern-day Tulsa. Right. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Aye, and that's aye. what we see through this whole opening scene. We We wind up back... At the hanging tree, uh, where Angela is just arriving, and we see what happens. Then she she comes up and she's like, "All right, there's an old man, and there's my best friend, and he's dead." And she doesn't even say anything. I don't think she just like scoops up the guy, just takes his wheelchair, gets him into her car, and drives him to her quote unquote bakery. Well, I think they had some conversation. There was conversing, wasn't there? I don't think there was. Not until they got to the bakery, huh? Pretty sure. Okay. And she searches him. She finds a bottle of pills and a note. That note. The note. The note. And then she secludes herself in one of her back rooms to have a breakdown. She, right. She held all that together. Her All of her emotions about Judd being dead. Now, what's interesting is she didn't call it in. And she just took the suspect. It's kind of weird. Of course. I mean, this is all very weird. It's, it's all. It's not exactly police procedure. Mm. We don't even know what the fuck is but going she, but, on still. <laughs> but she does not give the old man a savage beating. So well, how, nice. she can't kick an old man's butt. 
In a wheelchair? Pro- probably she just doesn't think that he could possibly be the guy that did it. He was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Right? He just rolled up on this tree where a guy was hanging. Correct. That's got to be it. <clears throat> so she suits up in her cop persona. You also made a comment about her workroom. You saw this mm. this workbench off in the background that you thought looked familiar. Right. <clears throat> just like our tinkerer's benches in Fallout in 76. Fallout, yeah, Fallout series. Sorry, I'm so... <clears throat> or all Fallouts. Clearing my throat too much today. Um, right. So she, she puts on her outfit, which I believe she's just called Knight. We find out. That's her name, Knight. Um, and she goes back and talks to the dude. Uh, he says he's 105. Mm-hmm. And he says he's the one that hung Judd, and he did it because he has psychic powers. Or maybe he's Dr. Manhattan. Right. The blue guy. Yeah. With the dong. <laughs> <laughs> she should have said, well, whip out your dong and let me see. <laughs> let me see that blue Prove dong. <laughs> uh, and he needs his pills because they help with his memory. Will that be important later? I don't know. Of course. Uh, <clears throat> fine. So you're the super old dude in a wheelchair and you somehow hung the guy from a tree. Let's just set all aside for now. Why did you do it? And he says it's because Judd had skeletons in his closet. Can't people just be, like, open and speak normally? That would be nice. It wouldn't it? Yeah. Just don't have secrets or riddles. Just say, hey, he's got some... Uh, he didn't really know what was in his closet. I mean, maybe to- it's like Judd was a time traveler, and he's the one the mastermind of the Tulsa Rays Massacre, and he's actually immortal, and now he's not because I killed him or something. I mean, just tell us what. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't know what the truth is going to turn out to be, but skeletons in his closet, which also, like, who doesn't? Yeah. I mean, jeez. <clears throat> we all have skeletons. Uh, but 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 there is a vast conspiracy in Tulsa. But it's too big. If he tells her, oh, yeah, this is why he's speaking in riddles now. Because it's just blow her mind, man. Oh, my God. She won't be able to handle the truth. God, you you know? can't handle the truth. So he can only tell her in pieces. <sighs> uh-huh. Yeah, kind of frustrating. I mean, right. it's like every annoying quest in every video game. (sighs) His name is Will, by the way, and her name is Knight. She introduces herself. Um, But if he's the guy that called her house, he knows her name is Angela Avar anyway. I don't know. But we don't know that that was him. That wasn't him. Could have been someone else. It sounded like somebody else. Probably was. It sounded like somebody very angry. But then she gets a phone call and she's got to go. And she's all like, what happened on the phone? Because she's pretending right, now, pretending. like, mm-hmm. what? Judd, oh my God. Judd's dead? <laughs> oh, <laughs> my God. I had no idea. Uh, so she leaves him there, I think, handcuffed to she something. She does, yeah. She, uh, and she runs off. Uh, I I did take note. Oh, no. The, okay, so then we got a side scene as she's running off. There was a different scene of a newsstand where some like teenage girl comes or maybe tween girl comes and picks up a whole bunch of magazines and newspapers for someone. Hmm. I don't know if that was important. Okay. I don't know what the whole point of all that, that whole scene was, but I did like that. One of the headlines on the newspapers was global squid falls, battle scientists, ba- uh, ba- sorry, baffle scientists, global squid falls, <laughs> which squid falls is, so they, so I no one knows why it's happening, but there was like a siren that went off in town when the squid fall was about to start. So it seems right. like it's been it's happening like a for hurricane. a while. Or yeah. <laughs> it's, it's squid season. Watch out. <laughs> Tornado sirens. Squid. <laughs> oh my God. Could you imagine if that showed up on our weather apps on our phone? Oh, that'd be so funny. Like a 52% chance of squid. <laughs> 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 Better take the squeegee today. Bring your buckets to school today, kids. You're going to need to hold it over your head for a while. <laughs> All right, so so that scene happens at the newsstand. Will we ever see those people again? I don't know. Uh, but Angela then arrives at the crime scene as night, you know, not just as Angela. Um, and, <laughs> and I had to write shiny face gives her a briefing, but then we do eventually find out his name is Looking Glass. I think that still might have been from the subtitles, but I'll take it. Uh, so Looking Glass is the really sour dude. Uh, with I don't trust mask. him. You don't think he's just like a a cop who's seen a little too much? No, he just doesn't. He seems he's doesn't have any like optimism left. Mm, you don't trust him at all. Okay, all right. Weasley. All right. Well, Looking Glass thinks that Cavalry was involved because who else could it be? 
Uh, and apparently Judd died hard. Like their initial investigation, like he struggled and probably was badly beaten up until the point where they hung him. And he then looked he all right. Out. He didn't have his face all pummeled. Like some of the, <laughs> some yeah, of the it shows. Wasn't, it wasn't watched. an Emmett Till situation. Right? <laughs> That's true. Uh, but they said, they said it was not, not a happy thing. Um, looking glass knows that they had dinner the night before. And how does he know that? I don't know. Mm hmm. I don't remember. But the one thing I took note of was that he's, she talks about how it was her husband and Judd and his wife and her kids. And then he like makes a crack about, oh, they're your kids. Right. What a dick. Right. But I think it's because he's such a dick that he's going to turn out to be an okay dude. Mm-hmm. Like he'll probably do the right thing, but he might also die. I think he's going to die a hero to make up for being a dick. I think he's part of the clan. He could be part of the clan. Also an option. Uh, and we do get the story about her kids, but we'll, we'll come back to that. Uh, <laughs> because all of a sudden, while they're about to fight, some idiot with like moth wings on his back falls <laughs> out of the sky and lands on their car. <laughs> the first thing I think of when I see that is the tick. Do you remember the tick with right. Arthur yes. who wore, wore a moth suit, except he looked like a bunny when he didn't have his wings out. Mm-hmm. Um, but it looks very much like that. And it turns out that that's how paparazzi work in this alternate universe. They flutter around on their little wings and try to get overhead pictures of everything. They might as well have like an inspector gadget. Like the helicopter. <laughs> That'd be awesome. I, I would take <laughs> one of those. I think that would be safer than the jet pack. Like and I, the moth I feel wings. like a jet pack would just burn your butt as you're flying. But a helicopter over your head, that would work great. Moth wings, you can get shot out of the air easier, probably. You're a bigger target. Yeah, something to think about when you're inventing ways for us to fly. Okay. <laughs> All right. So they cut Judd down. And as they're doing that, Angela flashes back to a previous Christmas, a year unknown. But she's with Calvin. They're having a nice night. They're talking about opening presents or not. And then the clock strikes midnight. And a gunman bursts into their home, starts shooting. He has a Rorschach mask on. And Angela manages to take him out with a knife, and Calvin runs and hides. That's uh, all he ever does. <laughs> that's his job, man. He's It's okay. He's the, he's the, what would you call it? What's the opposite of a damsel? Stability. He's the stable guy that remains. No, he's just not, he's just not a tough guy. Like, he's tall and probably kind of hunky or whatever, but... But he's not uh he's not a tough guy. He's, he's not- like the guy that is a chef. He's like the chef husband. What chef? Any chef husband. Okay. <laughs> he doesn't do anything but cook. <laughs> and fuck. And watch kids. And he helps watch the kids, right. He's good for three things. Mm-hmm. Cooking, fucking, and child rearing. Mm-hmm. So he he runs off and hides and she takes out the one guy, but then another guy is waiting and shoots her in the gut. And he's about to take her out, and then something happens we don't actually see. Maybe Calvin did save her. I don't know. I don't think we got a clear picture of that, did we? I don't think so. But she wakes up in the hospital. Cool. Um, we find out that oh, and Judd's there. He doesn't look. You know, he he's definitely he's got taken a beating. Hurt arm. Yeah. And scratches on his face. Well, maybe that's all a sham. Maybe he's the one that orchestrated the White Knight to consolidate power. Hmm. Fuck. You know what? That's probably what it was. <laughs> uh, we find out the 40 police houses were all hit at the exact same time, and they're calling it the White Knight. I don't get that. Why is it white? They're all white? No, Angela was black. No, the pe- the guys are white. Oh. Maybe. The are they? I mean, I don't even think we know that for sure. Uh, I think they are. I haven't seen any black Rorschach guys. Yeah, but guys. a lot of them are wearing masks. Yeah, but... Eh. Although there there were people saying that they're a bunch of racists. Mm-hmm. But then who knows? That could be like, we hate people with blue skin and we're trying to kill Dr. Manhattan. Sure. Maybe that's what that bomb is for. The watch batteries. Anyway, she had a partner named Doyle and he died. And Doyle had a wife and she died. Aw, Doyle. So that's where we... Learn. They don't ever really say it out loud, but we we get it. She adopted Doyle's kids, right? 
And apparently only the oldest kid was really old enough to Be grasp mm-hmm. what had happened. I think I, it must have been a baby, like an infant and like a toddler or something. And then this slightly older child actually remembers his parents. Um, and she's taking it all in. And he's trying to get her. He says, okay to cry. And he apologizes for letting her down and they hold hands. And this is where their friendship, I, like they barely knew each other before. It seems like she was still calling him captain. And Right. Yeah. Now they've bonded over this experience. Right. As you would, unless it's all a setup. But still, it makes sense from her perspective. So now we get some history on her. We know what the White Knight is at a very basic level. And we're back to dead Judd. So (laughs) one of the detectives named Red Scare, Mm. he's cool. He's got a Russian accent. He looks like he smells like worse than the other ones. I don't think he he showers much. He seems like a stinky guy. Uh, He's out for revenge. So he rallies the troops. They go over to Nixonville, which is a trailer park with a big Nixon statue out front. Okay, let's just back up for a sec. (laughs) Yes. What? Where are the police tapes and the investigations about car tracks? And I mean, nothing like that is happening. You mean, why are all these detectives that get to choose their own outfits and code names not detecting? Right. (laughs) They're just like... (laughs) (laughs) Because <laughs> they think they know who did it, I guess. Except they don't really know who did it. I mean, they're, they could clearly see that she had already been there if they looked at for car tracks. Oh, that. Oh, well, that's an interesting point, too. Yeah. I mean, I, she probably parked a little ways back, I think. Didn't she walk? She did, up? but still. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, shoe prints, you're right, her boot right. prints. Mm-hmm. She's got some probably very distinct boot prints. <laughs> These are fair questions, dear. Uh, but apparently these detectives are not good at their jobs. All right. That is I'll the, accept that. That is the most obvious situation here, because what they do is they're just like, one of these guys killed Judd. Let's We're going to get yeah. all of them. Let's go get them. <laughs> so it's a huge police presence. I mean, most of them are wearing the yellow, uh, the yellow gaiters and their standard police uniforms, but we have a good showing of detectives, too, who look like Watchmen-style superheroes, but less fit for combat it seems like i don't know um right so they bring a bunch of paddy wagons and says everyone get into the paddy wagons we're gonna tear down the statue of nixon right if you don't come out and get in the paddy wagons we're gonna tear down your statue I- we, we still know so little about this world mm-hmm. but i guess nixon must be the ultimate like revered president like he must have Washington level status as like one of or Lincoln maybe he's like Trump. Well, yeah, I mean, I kind of think I, it feels like that, right? Like if some, I'm sure there will be statues for Trump, and they'll be in really unpleasant places that you wouldn't want to go hang out. Sure, but then that statue will be sacrosanct, right? Don't you touch that statue of Trump? He was the only one that cared about us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, God, mm-hmm. I can't even say it without laughing. So they're threatening the statue of Nixon, and and, and uh, all I could say was it looks like what we would call a police riot. They attacked. They just started running in and attacking. Like, right. The, These people were just standing there like, what? What, what are we going to do about this? And then the police just start bashing skulls. I hope there wasn't a bunch of children that they hurt. Or left mother and fatherless. I know, kind of interesting. I mean, I don't think they killed anybody. I think they were just trying to arrest everyone. Well, they were beating the shit out of But then they started beating the shit out of everyone because they weren't moving fast enough. (sighs) Angela just looking over the place, looking glass. He's just watching right next to her. They don't join in until attacked. And then she just destroys a guy's face. Like, he does not have a face anymore. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Whew. That that guy. I mean, he, he ran all the way around and attacked her. So maybe he was a bad dude. Maybe he was a a Rorschach dude, but now he's a faceless dude. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Okay. So uh, one thing we didn't really talk about was she gave, uh, when when they were in the bakery, she gave Will, the old man, a cup of coffee or something. And then she took the mug, which immediately was like, oh, you're going to get his DNA. Like, that's what cops do, right? We've seen it before. Didn't he like down it too? Yeah. Like it was super hot and he just gulped and she's like, what the... (laughs) Hey, he's super tough, right? Like that's his that's his thing. I guess so. We do not understand what he can do. Uh, so she takes the D, she takes the mug. I I don't know what's happening with all these supposed suspects that just got the shit kicked out of them, but she's done with it. 
She gets in her car and she drives to a museum. Well, she's normal clothes again. It's like the next day or something. Uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah, so she goes. She, so. Right, it's like a museum for people that were affected by the White Knight, right? Well, I no. thought it. I at first I thought it was a war museum because it looked like there were like soldier like pictures of soldiers, but I think it was a museum specifically about the Tulsa race massacre, or maybe it was like an overall Tulsa museum that also had this. Specific- it was the red fordation thing. Yeah. And there were protesters out in front of the museum, and one of the signs, there were a few different signs, but one of them said, red fordations are abominations. And they're still not really telling us much, but we're starting to get the picture of it now. So she goes up to this kiosk, very advanced, very interactive computer. (laughs) And uh, we learn that President Redford offers, uh, 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 well... This exhibit was set up as part of condolences on the Tulsa massacre from like 40, 50 years you know, prior. Or, I mean, how old is that kid? It could be close to 100 years prior. Mm-hmm. Shit. I yeah. didn't think about that. Over 100 years. So this must be... Okay, so this is it's like a hundred years later, right? Actually, wait a second. No, if the Tulsa race massacre was 19... Oh, 40. 1942? Is that what we said? Mm-hmm. Okay. So it's got to be like 2040, 2041, somewhere in there. Doesn't I, look I'm like not it. sure how long they're driving around in some old cars. Well, and... right, but they've got really advanced technology on those cars. Do they? Yeah. Like what? Like a cool button that unlocks your gun. <laughs> it didn't work so well. <laughs> and, a, and a kiosk that can have a conversation with you and ask for a DNA sample right there on the spot. Well, yes, that that part is advanced. I'm disappointed that computer just should have had a hole where you can just deposit. Anyway, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> you could probably do that too. <laughs> That'd be the way I'd want to do it. Mm. Uh, so she she puts in this guy's information, will whatever, and then she swabs the coffee cup, puts it in a computer, find out if he's eligible for red fordations. Mm-hmm. So you can get a cash payout from a hundred years ago. You know, if your family was directly impacted by the Tulsa massacre. It's it's reparations. It's everything that has been talked about but never accomplished in regards to slavery is as a way to make it up to you for all the free labor you provided, not to mention all the other horrible things that happened while you were providing that labor. You know, your family can finally have a benefit. and We can bridge some of the wealth gap in this country, which is hard to accomplish because. Well, yeah, there's because, yeah, there's a lot of. Let's not get into that right now. Because racism doesn't exist anymore, as we know. No, there's more to it than that. Well, fine. But that's one of the reasons. Just let it go. No. Yes. No. Yeah, yes. That's part of it, too. <laughs> All right. So she leaves. She deposits his DNA. She goes home. There's a dude on her porch. And he wants to visit the kids. Right. This is weird. No explanation for this, either. He's I'm like guessing he's an uncle, right? Or something like Doyle's brother, maybe, or Doyle's wife's It's brother. my day. Right. <laughs> it's a very- maybe he's... Okay, so maybe Doyle was a stepdad. Oh, and he's the real dad? And he's the real dad asshole. God. Maybe. Because, I mean, why else would he have rights? Now, is he... I mean, was he in the wrong to come want to come visit his kids? Well, now. I mean, is he a dick? Is he a bad dad? We don't have any information. He got, he, I mean, yes, because he <laughs> got paid off to leave. Well, He's like. And, and there's the question, right? <laughs> it's, did he only come there hoping he'd get paid off to go away? Right. That's that what I would want like, to know. It's how possible. about I'll take some of those red fordations? <laughs> Yeah, so she cuts him a check, and I guess he leaves. Uh, she gets inside. Calvin is, uh, I, I guess she briefed him on the situation. She wants to know, he wants to know why she didn't arrest old man Will, and he's wondering if they're safe. She lies to him about that. She knows they're not safe. <sighs> why lie? The phone call she got said, I know who you are, Angela Abar. Uh-huh. Why lie? Because that's what people do in these TV shows. I can't I'd be imagine. like, no, we're not safe. Take the kids and go away. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's like the coronavirus. Well, we just didn't want to panic anyone. Take the kids to the bakery. So go and lick that flagpole. Everything Lock will be them fine. in. Yeah, you have a secret lair. That's true. <laughs> Although she doesn't want the kids to know about the secret lair. So there is that. Mm. But 
Yeah. I mean, there's lots of different options to get your kids protection, to get your husband protection. I mean, he must be important, right? But she just lies and says everything's fine. Of course, baby. And she goes and talks to Topher, the eldest boy. I guess maybe about the visitation or about Judd's death or some of each. And he is like very emotionless. Like she put that front she puts on. Right. He's just very matter of fact about it all. He's playing with some cool like space Legos. He seems to have some kind of power too. You think he has a superpower? Does Mm -hmm. she have a superpower? Or is she just a badass? Well, I don't know. I mean, she seems to be pretty strong. Yeah. But maybe she's just well-trained. And she's pretty tough for a lady that got gutted by fucking bullet shrapnel exploding in her stomach. We'll see, I guess. Uh, I'm looking forward to finding out. I mean, Watchmen isn't really a very super universe necessarily. Like Ozymandias was ridiculously smart. And of course, uh, you know, Dr. Manhattan was really powerful, but most of the Watchmen types were really just either like smart and they invented some cool Isn't there gadgets. invisible guy? I don't think so. Okay. Well, there was the Rorschach guy with the mask that Rorschach morphed. had a cool mask. <laughs> So it's kind of magical. In the movie, they seemed a little bit more super than they did in the comic books, like stronger and faster than anybody else. But they weren't necessarily that way in the comic, which is definitely where this is taking most of its inspiration from, I think. Anyway, um, so they have a little talk. Um, And then it's later that night, Topher and uh, Calvin are watching this TV show that has this humongously long trigger warning at the front of it of like all the different people that shouldn't watch the show. It's called American hero story. And I don't know what this is going to mean either, but it, it, it's a reenacted story of this guy named Rolf Muller, who I don't think is necessarily related to the Mueller from the beginning of the episode, but I, I don't know, but he was a strong man and he's got a scratchy voice, kind of like movie Rorschach and his name was Hooded Justice, and we see him stop a robbery, and there was a lot of blood. Um, and does any of this matter? Again, I don't know. But his narration over his fight for justice or whatever was kind of gliding us towards Judd's house where Angela was going for a wake or a reception of some kind. Did you get anything good out of that? No. Nope. Like, does it seem like it has any larger meaning? I mean, I'm sure it does, but no. Mm. I don't know. All right. Uh, at Judd's house, we meet Senator Joe Keen. We don't know anything about him yet, except that he apparently is running for president against, I guess, Redford or whoever's currently in office. Uh, he offers his condolences and then Angela faints and she wakes up upstairs. She's with Jane, Judd's widow, and Jane wants her to go get those motherfuckers did this to him. And then apparently the fainting was all the sham because she starts sneaking around the house with funky, cool goggles on. Yeah. Those are the goggles of every kid's dream, right? Like we used to see, you ever get like shitty magazines when you were a kid and there'd be the ads in the back for the x-ray specs. Mm -hmm. That's what that was. It is so cool. And I want those. But like, you know, ones that really work like in the TV show. They might radiate your brain. Uh, I don't know. Maybe worth it. It could be fun. What if the radiation gives you a superpower? Or could it kill you. Yeah, or a tumor. A, a super tumor. <laughs> One of the two. So she wanders around and she finds a secret door in his closet. And inside is a KKK robe. Right. So Judd. I don't know. It's too weird. Like, that could be something. Maybe Judd is a former Klansman. Maybe he's a current Klansman. But... It would be hard if you were if you were deeply, deeply racist to your core. Wouldn't it be hard to be best friends with a black lady and like hug her and you know have? You would think so. I, I mean, mean he look, seemed to genuinely care. He didn't seem he to held be her hand. It. Yeah, that would have to be very difficult. So I feel like there's some other explanation. Maybe former. Maybe he was going undercover as a Klansman. Maybe maybe the KKK is something completely different in this alternate universe. Maybe. <laughs> but knows? it was not like, I mean, 
it's something that looked currently used because the way it was positioned and it was you like, know, like if you have a KKK thing and you're reformed, you don't keep it like in a panel behind your door, all nice and pristine. Well, right. I feel like if I was in the clan and I had robes, they'd probably be folded up in a drawer, like all my other or burned. shit. But his was like hanging on, like it was like it, it was, was like, like a superhero outfit, right? Maybe he was a superhero and his name was Clans Man. <laughs> 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 and he wasn't racist at all, but he was using something. Mm. He's like Batman. He was using something he's afraid of as a symbol to inspire people. Okay. <laughs> well. That could be it. Let's hope. I don't know. We'll see. So she sees the clan robe and she leaves. <sighs> oh, God. This makes my head hurt. Maybe, Maybe let's just finish the Angela shit and then we'll come back. Because all of a sudden, Jeremy Irons is back. And it just, just, what? I don't understand. But let's just finish about her. So she goes back to her basement, her bakery, and uh, old man has freed himself of his handcuffs. He left, got some food, came back. Uh, right. <laughs> he, How did he get the code? I, I don't know. How did he, he get in? He's, he's impressive. He's an impressive dude. Mm -hmm. uh, but although he also seems kind of confused and out of it, maybe he hasn't had his brain pills recently. But she says she's going to arrest him. Uh, he says he has friends in high places that would rescue me if you do. Clearly. She gets the call from the museum. The DNA test just finished. And uh, this old man has two descendants. And one of them is her. He's her granddad. Aw, dad. I mean, papa. And also she has a Hebrew tattoo on her arm. Pop, pop. I got to right. look Right, kind of strange, but... Maybe that's real. Not. Well, maybe, but usually they would. Uh... Oh, you know what? You might be right. <laughs> I just Googled uh, Angela Abar Hebrew tattoo. And the headline, at least on this article, is uh, everything you need to know about Regina King's badass arm tattoo. But it's actually not connected to her Watchmen character. Hmm. But usually they cover that shit up with. Yeah. And it's almost like they made a point of showing it. Her tattoo is on the underside of her left arm, and it was on display when she won her Oscar for Best Supporting Actress earlier this year. I didn't know that either. Um, the tattoo means unconditional love in Aramaic, a Semitic language that was originally spoken, blah, blah, blah. So apparently it's not actually Hebrew, hmm. even though it looks a hell of a lot like Hebrew. But unconditional love. Yeah, it's kind of weird that it showed up in the show, that they didn't edit it out one way or another. All right, fine. Well, scratch that note. She doesn't have Hebrew on her arm. It's Aramaic, and it's not important. Cool. Anyway, he's her granddad. Aww. Aww. So he wanted to meet her and show her where she came from. And she says, cool, I'm arresting you. Again, nothing makes sense. <sighs> so she puts him in an SUV. And then she's going to go around and get into the driver's seat and drive away with him. And then everything goes to hell because some kind of flying saucer magnetizes the car <laughs> just, just has one of those giant magnets on it yeah and pulls the car away is it aliens is it just another dude with a funky it's a hovercraft? crane on the other side of the road <laughs> yeah it's just a stationary crane that someone drove up a couple hours ago and was lying in wait uh and on his way out into the sky he drops uh the note to her the one with the or it falls. The German, but uh, yes, the German propaganda with the "please take care of this child" note. Oh gosh! So we got. Uh, who? I mean, he definitely has friends in high places, high enough to lift him out with a super magnet. But mm -hmm. what? I I don't know. Why doesn't he just say what he needs to say instead of needing to be rescued by aliens <laughs> or whatever? So because <laughs> it would blow her mind, man. Uh. I guess what this seems to be leading to. So let's assume Don Johnson, Judd, let's assume he's a bad guy. Mm -hmm. If he's a bad guy, then she is safe because the people that kill him are the real good guys, probably in costumes. And they're just trying to get her to like see the light maybe and then join them. Maybe. Like, maybe hmm. that's her future, is that she's going to become one. Maybe, because th these guys aren't the Watchmen. The Watchmen were not part of the cops, right? So, since the show's called The Watchmen, we got to see some Watchmen at some point. 
The so Watchmen he, aren't the cops? No. Well, I, I mean, they, I, anything's possible in this show, but I don't think so. Hmm. I mean, in the in the comic, they were vigilantes, basically, right? Like, there were times when they were, uh, Dr. Manhattan worked for the government. They might have had some government affiliations from time to time as a whole. But mostly, they kind of did their own thing. Um, so, I would think old dude is part of the Watchmen, and they just rescued him. And hopefully, in episode three, we'll get to see what the Watchmen are really about. Because the show wasn't going to last that long. Well, let's hurry up and go watch All right, it. Fine. Well, you, we can't do this unless we talk about the blue penis. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so let's I love just that talk we get about, to see penis. I, I love it. I know you love the penis. I do. So let's talk about Jeremy Irons, because all of a sudden we flash over to him in the middle of all this Angela meeting her granddad shit. It's his anniversary again. It's always his anniversary. Oh, he you're the one that noticed this one. He's riding his horse before it's his anniversary. He stops at a tree and plucks a tomato. Right. Tomatoes don't grow on trees. And I I probably would not have thought of that because <laughs> tomatoes grow on vines. Right. But Which I know. But I wouldn't have thought of that. And you were the one that pointed that out. Like, that's not normal for a tomato. No. Okay. <laughs> so he plucks a tomato off of a tree, eats some of it, and then, like... I think the squishing of it was to demonstrate that it wasn't really an apple. Like, we oh, were supposed to... Oh, in case we to. didn't get it? Yeah. I think that that's what that was. But why do we have to know that in the first place? What is it about <laughs> where he is or something in this future? It's raining squids and tomatoes grow on trees. But do we need to know that tomatoes grow on trees? Apparently so. <laughs> okay. Uh, so he gets another cake. They're celebrating again. Looks uh, the same. But this time his servants are in white lab coats. Mm -hmm. That was different. Uh, and tonight they're putting on the play. Uh, so the play has an audience of one, Jeremy Irons, <laughs> a guy we don't have a name for yet. <clears throat> and there are other people around. There's a guy playing violin. There's some stage hands and they all have hoods on. Right. So we don't know who they are. Part of me thought maybe they were blind, like they weren't supposed to see the play. Like he brought in, like he went on Craigslist and was like 50 bucks for a violinist, but then you have to wear a hood the whole time. You know, I mean, like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is not what it turned out to be, although it's even weirder. Uh, and the play which in the last episode was something about the watchmaker's son or something like that, right? Like that was what the play was called, the watchmaker's lament or son or something about the watchmaker. But the play is about John Osterman and Janie Slater. And as soon as they said Osterman, I was like, that's Dr. Manhattan. And Janie Slater was. Is that his girlfriend? Shit, I can't remember her name, but she was like. Uh, in the movie or comic, whatever, like he was dating Janie Slater's like daughter or something too. Like it became a generational love affair. Ew. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember her name now, though. It was uh, Astro Girl or fuck, something like that. I don't know. But she was one of the Watchmen, mm -hmm. and he became Dr. Manhattan. And this was now a play of the story of the creation of Dr. Manhattan. He goes in this chamber. He's testing some kind of energy. It explodes and it lights on fire. And then out of, the, out of that was born Dr. Manhattan. And it is more or less the correct telling of the story, as far as I know it vaguely. And then he comes down from the from the ceiling <laughs> with his blue everything. How'd you like that there? Bro? I loved it. Yeah, you love that dangling participle. I wonder if it was real. A real dick? Mm -hmm. Why not? I mean, it wasn't like crazy big or anything. No, I don't know. Just because people have a thing about showing their real stuff. I guess, but like we know that Hodor, when Hodor showed his wang, that was not a real wang. That was a prosthetic, and that's why it was so big. long. <laughs> long and thin um oh this looked like a real wiener to me yeah i could buy did. it i mean you got to keep the room warm for that kind of dangling you can't be filming on a cold set and expect the penis to retain its shape like that but uh, i thought it looked real hmm. what it's true i'm just i'm Are imagining like him <laughs> no, no no no. i'm just imagining this poor guy trying to get ready for this scene and he's got all this blue paint on and you know how guys have to kind of like tug on it so it doesn't like shrink up inside <laughs> so <laughs> wait <Yes. laughs> <You> just <laughs> yeah so you're picturing him tugging on his blue wiener right before he comes down from the ceiling right okay i'm sure he was you got you got at least but then the paint would come he, off 
Well, you could you probably just waggle it around. You don't they have to probably touch it spray even. It. Just you know, move your hips back and forth. Right. Back you just kind of do the whole yeah. just, flopping. Just keep it moving. Just get some blood flowing <laughs> down there. Not too much, just a little bit of blood flow. Right. Anything else would be vulgar. <laughs> <clears throat> now, Dr. Manhattan is much bigger, I must say. It was not to but, scale. You mean in, in from what you remember from the movie? Mm-hmm. Well, but this isn't really Dr. Manhattan. I know. I'm, I'm sure just the saying, real I'm Dr. Just Manhattan. Saying. Yeah, this is just an actor playing the real Dr. Manhattan. Right. Um, <laughs> so Dr. Manhattan's born, and what we see in the end is that the butler dude, whatever his name, uh, Mr. Phillips, they call him, Mm-hmm. He actually did burn to death right. <laughs> as part of the special effects. <laughs> and this was a completely different dude that came down from the ceiling. And when the guys take off all their hoods, they are all Mr. Phillips. Mm-hmm. So, and not Ms. a robot. Crookshanks? Miss Crookshanks, yes. Yeah. I believe that I, was her name. Mm-hmm. There were more Miss Crookshanks. I only saw one of her. Oh, maybe there was only one of her. I did not see any other Crookshankses. Hmm. But they're not robots. That Mr. Phillips was dead. Like, he yeah, was burned. he was charred. So it must be a cloning thing or a superpower thing. <sighs> Maybe it's one guy that can just make copies of himself. Very confusing. <sighs> <clears throat> but besides, <clears throat> excuse me again, besides the confusion of it all, what does any of it have to do with anything? That's what I really want to know. I don't know. Because, I, I mean, at least this time we saw something directly related, related to the Watchmen universe with Dr. Manhattan. So I don't have to question anymore whether or not we were watching the wrong show. Okay. The relation is this man has a watch. Yes. That is the relation. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thought there was going to be more to that. <laughs> nope, that's it. <laughs> oh, boy. So and everything is weird. Everything is very weird. Whether it's the squid rain, the Robert Red, tree. President Redford, the tomato tree, the blue penises. Crookshanks rubbing stuff on his thighs and he's naked typing. The magnet from the sky. The magnet, the sky magnet, right? The Ku Klux Klan robe. Right. Mystery Klan robes. Ay, ay, ay. It's one of the weirdest shows, maybe ever. And with that... I'm ready to go watch episode three. Uh-huh. You want to go watch episode three? I'm ready. Let's go watch that shit. Anyone, I, 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 Anyone want to come over and watch it yeah. with us? <laughs> <laughs> Just wear a mask. This show's all about masks. We could have right. a little watching party together and we'll all wear masks. So if you want our home address, hit me up, uh, Jeff at pot of uh, or at pot of on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Jennifer at pot of or at kid. No. Yes. At kid free weekend <laughs> on Twitter. Sure. Um, and otherwise we'll be back soon with episode three, uh, which I'm sure will explain everything and we will no longer be swimming in confusion. Hopefully. I'm sure that's what it is. Yes. Yeah. Everything will be clear. Yep. Crystal. <laughs>